guys. We have lots of exciting news this week. One student wrote an article on glowing sea turtles. Have you ever wanted to live in this dead castle? We have a story on that, too. Enjoy the show. Hey, guys. I'm here with an interview with Mrs. Gifford, our school librarian. You see Mrs. Gifford once a week when your class comes to the library. She's always friendly and helpful. But how much do we really know her? Is she a government spy? Let's get to know her a little better. Hi, Mrs. Gifford. Are Hi. you a government spy? I'm sorry. The government won't let me answer that. Could you tell us a little about what your job entails here at Forest Park? Well, my job is to provide informational books to the students and also books to read for recreation. That means the fun fiction. How long have you been working at Forest Park? A long time. This is my 18th year. What is one thing students can do to make your job easier? That's a good question. Um, Following library rules would be the first thing that pops into my mind. <laughs> what do you like to do for fun? Um, I enjoy my pets, and of course, I love to read. Do you have any children or pets? I do. I have um, two adult daughters, and I have dogs, and cats, and horses, and a bird. What is your favorite book? Uh, that's an easy one. Uh, I found my favorite book when I was about your age and started reading, and it was a book by Marguerite Henry about a horse that really lived named um, the Godolphin Arabian, and the title of the book is King of the Wind, and I cry every time I read it still. If you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? I would like to go to India. I have always been fascinated with India and so many of my students. Um, are from India or their parents are from India and I'm just very curious about that country. On behalf of all the students at Forest Park, thank you Mrs. Gifford for your services to our school. You're welcome. Thank you for interviewing me. Chris Rosati from Durham, North Carolina was diagnosed with ALS in 2010. We talked a few weeks ago on the Friday show about ALS and cele celebrities raising money with an ice bucket challenge. As you might recall, ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease is a terrible illness that causes degeneration of the body's neurons, affecting the sufferer's speech, muscle control, and eventually breathing. Learning that he has ALS for Chris Rosati was learning that he was going to die. Instead of getting down, Chris decided to spend the time he, he has left spreading kindness. Chris believes in the butterfly effect, that his good deeds will cause others to do good deeds in return. Spreading the kindness. One day, Chris had this wacky idea so he posted it on Facebook. Steal a Krispy Kreme truck and give hundreds of donuts to people all over Durham. But guess what? Krispy Kreme read that post and thought it was a great idea. Chris got to see his crazy dream come true. But that's not all. Chris also gave two girls $50, each to spread kindness. Their father had served in Sierra Leone while, the, while in the Peace Corps. So the two girls sent the money to a village there to host a feast celebrating being Ebola free. They then sent Chris a picture so he could see what his good deed accomplished. Spreading kindness can feel so good. It's amazing to feel su to see such awesome unselfish acts. Thank you for your inspiration, Chris, and thanks for listening. Beyond Slack. That's the name of the 20-year-old working to clean up the oceans. Most 20-year-olds are still trying to figure out what they want to do in life. Not by Onslaught. Ever since he was 16 years old, the Dutch teenager has one mission. To clean up the plastic that's polluting our oceans and killing marine life. Slat's first exposure to ocean garbage came during a diving vacation in Greece. The teenager was stunned to see that there was more plastic in the beaches than fishes in the sea. Upon completing high school, he could never erase the images of plastic from his mind. In 2013, Slat dropped out of college and established the Ocean Cleanup Foundation. Its mission was to create an environmentally friendly, large-scale, and efficient way to remove plastic from aquatic ecosystem. The plan focused on the five garbage patches that have been accumulated by rotating ocean currents in specific areas. According to experts, the five harbor about 5.25 trillion pieces of plastic floating around the world's oceans today. Slat's teams hypothesized that if we create a stationary collection area around each one, the plastic could be picked up in an economical and efficient manner. 
A plan was convincing enough to raise the team close to 2.2 million U.S. dollars in a crowdfunding campaign. The Ocean Cleanup Project plans to test its technology with a small task off the shores of Japan in 2016. If all goes well, they will embark on the tour of cleaning up the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. The team estimates it'll take 10 years to extract just 42% of the plastic that is currently floating around the area. In the meantime, you can help by spreading the word about littering. Make sure your trash goes in the can or it might end up in the ocean. Thank you. Hi, my name is Achilles from Room Fire 2. I have a cool story for today's Friday show. When the team of marine biologists led by David Gruber of the City University of New York headed to the Salomon Islands in the, in the South Pacific in the late July, uh, they, they were hoping to film some biofluorescent sharks and coral, coral reefs. What they had never expected to find was the world's first known biofluorescent reptile. Gruber, who released the video and images of the glowing turtle on September 28th, says the encounter happened during a night swim. The researchers were in the middle of the filming when they suddenly noticed a beautiful flor- fluorescent r- turtle that resembled an alien spacecraft with a patchwork of neon and green and red o- all over its head and body. Identified as a Hawksbill sea turtle, it is the first known reptile to exhibit by a fluorescence, the ability to absorb light, transform it, and then emit it as a different color. Thank you. Volkswagen, one of the top car companies in the world, is in big trouble. They are designing cars that pollute our air. A government agency, the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, has set a certain limit on how much Volkswagen, on how much harmful gases a car is allowed to expel. Apparently, Volkswagen wasn't up to the task because they secretly invented a device which can sense when the car is in an emissions test and will automatically lower emissions in order to pass. But as soon as it is no longer in testing mode, it releases harmful gases that are up to 30 and 40 times the rate that EPA allows. Volkswagen has sold at least 11 million cheating cars on the roads, which release harmful gases that can cause asthma and other lung problems. The plot worked for a while, but was discovered by EPA. The company admitted to their cheating and lost a lot of business due to angry customers and also had to pay a fine to EPA of $18 billion, or $37,500 for every bad car they sold, which is more than the customers paid for it. People think they did this because the managers of Volkswagen were under pressure from every direction, their bosses and customers, to quickly find a way, way to reduce the pollution. The company is apologizing for the scandal and suffering the loss of many loyal customers. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rashi Kakrala from Room 501. Have you, do you have interest in mutants? If so, this story will be very interesting to you. Japanese fisherman Hiroshi Hirasaka has an unusual hobby. He likes to catch and eat bizarre looking creatures. The avid hunter has even outlined his conquest in a book called uh, Exotic Fish Species I Caught judged and tried eating. Hence you can only imagine his delight when he reeled in yet another scary looking space specimen of the coast of Japan's Hokkaido Island on August 30th. So the alien looking fish whose massive mouth covers almost half its body appears to be something out of science fiction movie. It's just a specimen of the wolf fish that dwell on the dwell on the floors of the Pacific and Atlantic oceans. The only difference Hirasaka's 2 meter long catch is almost twice the size of typical members of the deep sea dwellers that measure about 1.2 meters in length. As for what Hirasaka thinks about the controversy this giant catch has created, he doesn't care. He is just thrilled at the opportunity to be able to add this cool guy to the long list of exotic creatures he has caught and tasted. People might have dreamt about living in a sandcastle, but now it's a dream come true. You can experience staying in one in the Netherlands thanks to two brand new sand hotels in the cities of Oss and Sneek. The developer is Zan Hotel. His inspiration was the sand- temporary ice hotels like the one in Sweden. One of the best parts is that the guest rooms are hidden inside enormous sand sculptures which are inspired by I- important events that took place in China. All the rooms in these sweet hotels have windows, working showers, running water, and all the ro- and the rooms are all made of sand. Don't worry, the walls and ceilings won't collapse on you, because the walls are in re- are supported with reinforced concrete. 
These are awesome but also completely safe hotels. One night in a room costs 150, 150 euros, which is about $172. One of the coolest parts is that the hotel took five weeks and two million pounds of sand to build one of the two hotels. These extraordinary hotels are one-room suites with luxurious bathrooms and free Wi-Fi. Don't worry about the beds being made of sand. They surely are not. The sinks don't have sand instead of water. It's actually the exact opposite. But the bad news is that the hotel in the city of Snake and, uh, cl was closed and forcefully collapsed in, on September 29th, 2015. And the hotel in Oz closes on October 4th because they're part of a sand festival. But don't worry, the developer has plans to rebuild them next year in the Netherlands, UK, and Germany. Two more countries with sand hotels. Thank you. I'm James. I'm Kavya. We are from Room 407, Ms. Freeheim's 5th grade class. And we are from the Forgen Language Enrichment Program, also known as FLEP, here at Forest Park. We would like to teach you this week's Wolverine Character Week. It's Ming. Ming means bright. This word came in ancient times, where people thought that the sun and the moon were very bright. Over here, Ming, which means bright, has a sun and a moon. That's why it is called bright. That is, it's Ming. Now, everyone, please repeat after us. Ming. Ming. Xie xie. Thank, Thank you. Hi, I'm Mega with this week's brain teasers. Last week's primary brain teaser was, what is too much for one, just right for two, and not enough for three? The answer is a secret, and the winners are 207 and 306. The intermediate brain teaser is, what is so delicate that it is broken when you speak its name? The answer is silence, and the winners are 501, 504, 401, 408, and 404. This week's primary brain teaser is, there are three houses. One is red, one is blue, and one is white. If the red house is to the left of the house in the middle, and the blue house is to the right of the house in the middle, where is the white house? I repeat, there are three houses. One is red, one is blue, and one is white. If the red house is to the left of the house in the middle, and the blue house is to the right of the house in the middle, where is the white house? The intermediate brain teaser is, the day before yesterday, Christy was seven years old. Next year, she will turn ten. How is this possible? Again, the day before yesterday, Christy was seven years old. Next year, she will turn ten. How is this possible? That's it for brain teasers. Hey everybody, it's Chin May, and I'm back with the weather this week. Today, the weather will be partly cloudy with a high of 82 degrees and a low of 58 degrees with a 0% chance of rain. On Saturday, it will be partly cloudy with a high of 81 degrees and a low of 60 degrees with a 0% chance of rain. And finally, on Sunday, it will be partly cloudy and there will be a high of 80 degrees and a low of 60 degrees with a 0% chance of rain. Again, that's it for weather this week. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this week's Friday show.